welcome to a new tutorial in this image processing series. Today we're going to talk about an algorithm called SNAKE. So it's basically a segmentation algorithm. And you basically draw around an object that you want to segment out. And then step by step, we'll adjust along the contours of the object you want to segment in an iterative way. And when it tries to conform and move along the different kind of shapes, it looks a little bit wiggly like a snake. And hence the name, the snake algorithm. So the idea is that you basically create a lot of different dots around the object, and then the lines try to conform within those different points. And you want the lines around it to be smooth, but at the same time you want them to be pretty exact around the shape of the object. So that is basically the difficulty in the algorithm to conform to both smoothness, but also exactness. So you might now wonder how does it converge and like what numerically is actually converging? So as I said before, the overall shape is made out of different points with lines in between those points. And that is basically called to parameterize the whole curve. So we basically have a function for x and y, and the parameters goes then between 0 and 1 continuously along the curve. So you can actually think about that when we are visualizing the different curves. The lines are far from perfect at first, but as we can see, it converges and gets better and better. Maybe you've heard somebody say active contours, and this is what they mean something that is converging and iteratively being better and better to adjust along the shape of the object you want to segment. So how is this converging? We can say that we have determined an energy and when this energy is low, it fits the object the best. We can see it as maybe like a rubber band that is very stretched has a lot of energy that we have to use in order to actually expand it. If we want to put it around an object, maybe like my fingers here, it snaps back and the energy gets lower, but it's more exact at the same time. We can have higher energy, which is not perfectly around the edges, or we can have a lower energy, which fits the object the best. And we can discretize this energy along the different points on our shape that we have. And then we want to minimize all of that. So let's talk a little bit more about the energies. We have one internal energy and basically the internal energy checks the shape of the curve. And that determines if the curve is more smooth or more wiggly and the external as you can understand from the word, is nothing about the rubber band itself, but is about the image that the rubber band wants to capture. So the external one checks different edges, because as we know, the contours of an object will also be on the edge. So we want to see if our rubber band also is on one of these different edges. So let's go into the math. As you can see here, we have our energies, the internal energy, and we have the external energy. And as I said, we have piecewise linear estimation because we have these all different points on the line. So let's look first on the internal energy equation. So a low derivative here would mean that the rubber band is not that elastic or stretchy, if you rather say that. So we do not want the different points on the band to be ununiform, which basically means that they are spread around the curve with different distances. Because as you know, a derivative, you can actually say that that's the speed. So we do not want to go with different speed over the rubber band. So the second part of this internal energy is about basically the stiffness of the rubber band. And that keeps the points from oscillating, okay? It basically means that they are more on a curve together rather than being up and down on in different positions. So a low 
energy would basically mean that the curve is pretty uniform in where the different points are and it is not oscillating that much. So it's pretty smooth. Okay, so let's check the external energy. We do want the lines to lie on basically the edges of the object we want to segment. Maybe it's not then a surprise for you guys that checked my previous videos that we have to check the derivatives to different location from the x, y point we are at at the moment. So here we basically have the derivative at the point s for x and y at each point at the curve. That's why we have the integral. So we integrate the numbers while we're working around the curve. And as you can see here, there's a minus sign because we do want the energy to be as low as possible when we have a lot of edges. When a gradient is zero, there's basically no edge. But when we have a lot of edges, we will have a high negative number that will affect the total energy to be much smaller. So we're basically checking on the both x direction and we want to check on the y direction. So now you know the external which is basically based on the image edges and the internal, which is basically the elasticity and the stiffness of our function. Then you add them together to get the total energy. So that's basically the energy we want to minimize. So when we reach the point in the iterations where the energy is not getting smaller anymore, we basically found the perfect snake around our object. So the perfect segmentation based on our criteria. Okay, so how does this minimizing actually work? I don't know, maybe you've heard of a term which is called gradient descent. If not, that's something that's going to be taking up in later videos when we talk more about machine learning. But what is basically happening is that we create a multidimensional world for each point on the curves. And you can see these dimensions as a landscape with a lot of hills and maybe deeper parts. So let's say that we are standing on a hill. So in which direction, in any direction, should we go for us to get lower down into the valley? And there's usually one step that we can take that makes the biggest impact in us coming down to the lowest point, hence the lowest energy. And this is made by basically taking the derivative of the energy based on the curve. So we do this step by step by step by step until we come to the valley on the lowest point. So with every step we will take, we will just go upwards again and not down. So that's basically our minimum point. I hope this also makes sense to you and that you really liked and enjoyed this video. Then please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe below. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.